Well, welcome to the Party Up Podcast, everybody. This is Keith Brown in the party today. This is a very special episode of the Party Up Podcast. The second in our, like, kind of learn from the professor's series, I guess. <laughs> it's just you and Justin, and I mean, it's not like I'm going to have much more time to do this, so. <laughs> but yeah, se- episode two of two. Welcome, Keith. Thanks How you doing, man? <laughs> Just look at me. Okay. We're just we're just talking we're just talking here. We're just uh, chilling. But I keep we're just talking about smoothie. yeah. You looking at the, the the levels or whatever? Okay. Is that just like a force of habit from yeah, like you gotta I gotta keep an eye on it? To see. Like, okay. <laughs> You're fidgeting right now. Are you like trying to get comfortable? Yeah, I just don't know where to put this microphone, but I guess over here is okay. Are you cool there? Yeah, I mean like you got it. Yeah, just adjust, adjust so it a little bit. Whatever, whatever you got to do, man. You're the guest. Like right. this is all. This is it's my show, but it's your show. Okay. Like you know what I mean? How do I get this to go higher? I don't know. That's something. Every time I move it, I keep breaking it. <laughs> yeah, that I don't think you can do. Okay. But can I, if I talk like this? Yeah, it should works. be fine. Okay. <laughs> if you can find a way to be comfortable around the rig. Yeah. Okay. All right, well, <laughs> so how you doing, man? Good, how are you? It's the end of the semester. <laughs> it is, yeah, end of my last semester, That's which crazy. is kind of, yeah, what are you right? About that? Uh, I mean, it's pretty crazy, right? Like, but the way I've been thinking about it, right, is like I'm so like like this is a whole different kind of senioritis, right? Because like when you're in high school, you're like, man, screw this. Like I can, you know, I get to go and do cooler things. College is gonna be awesome. Yeah, it is what it is. But it's like now when you're graduating from college, it's like you don't know what the next step necessarily is right. at this point, and the next step is also big because it leads into the rest of your entire life. Yeah. So like. But at the, at the same time, like, I've been in the education system for, like, 17 years at this point. I'm ready to do something else, yeah. so. So you know you have a plan? I mean, yeah. And I know I hate to be that person. No, no. Like, well, it's, I mean, it's it's a, it's a good question because it's something I've been thinking about for a while. But it's I like. not. So yeah. I mean, totally I mean right. I kind of had, like, like I had, I had, you know, a super ambitious plan A. Plan A fell through. So I had relatively ambitious plan B. That also fell through. Right. So I like I was trying to because I got friends in the Chicago area. Right. And so I was trying to move there because I've got a lot of like like both creative friends in the city and then just outside of the city. I have friends that I would probably be moving in with. Um, but that didn't work just because I wasn't able to find work. I was applying for, um, you know, editing internships and stuff like that. At, like there was one at like this this video production firm that just focused on videos like like uh, prom- like ads and stuff like all focused around animals and pets, mm-hmm. which I thought was a pretty solid gig. And they wanted me to come in for an interview, and they're like, "Hey, can we get you into the office for an interview?" And I'm like, "Uh, not, not really, guys. Like, um, I'm like, you know, I'll take any steps, you guys. You know, like, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you guys on the phone, do a Skype interview, all that." And they're like, "No, we really need you to come in." And I'm like, "Well, so that didn't work." Now, but would you ever just go somewhere and like just figure it out? Not without money. That's yeah. the thing. I don't have enough money to do that but right do now. Do you think you could get a job just doing something menial, like? for stuff while you were in that place possibly yeah i'm not opposed to doing that but also like i want to like you know i want to do some something relatively interesting relatively fulfilling right it doesn't have to be like dream job right out the gate but like right right. you know i'm not looking to like flip burgers or anything like that you know i'm not trying to do that like what did i come here for i'm saying this coming from a person that would have never ever done something like what really? You you didn't want to take you didn't you were taking the leap was like not an option no, for you. I mean, so when I graduated here back in is this where you, did you go to undergrad here? Yeah yeah yeah. Oh, okay. So I mean there was no film program it was just an art program that had some film classes. Yeah. And then the woman who taught them um, went on sabbatical and actually died. Really? Yeah. So oh my then god. There were no classes. So I had gotten a job on campus which was really weird because I was told that it was like going to be dealing with video in some way. You got to remember that back in when I came here in, in um, 1992, like, yeah. you know, video was very archaic. And not yeah, totally. It wasn't like at the forefront yeah, of the educational yeah. system. Yeah. Um, so when people figured out that you knew how to do something like that, they were like, Oh, okay. Cause we don't have anybody that knows what's going on. Mm-hmm. So, um, so I got this job uh, and it, they said, oh, it has to do with video. <laughs> it really had nothing to do with video. And yeah. I was like, I'm going to stay there until uh, Christmas, and then I'm going to quit because they require you to work over the Christmas vacation. And although I only lived 25 minutes away, I was like, it's still I'm not like, coming here. Yeah, nah. <laughs> um, and then uh, 10 years later, I was still working at this place. But um, So yeah. you didn't end up quitting over no, the break? I didn't end up quitting over the break. And I only worked six hours a week. And that, oh, for wow. me, that was too much. Yeah. Um, 
So uh, yeah. So anyway, when I when I left here, I had a uh, art degree. Mm-hmm. Where basically art was the department where I had probably taken the least amount of courses. Don't ask me how that works. Yeah, wait, you took the least amount of art classes, but you ended up with a degree. Yeah, so is that like a gen ed thing? Where yeah. did they oh, just gen, overload gen ed, you with no, gen eds? Gen eds I took, but uh, you know, when you are here, I don't know. I guess I talk my way out of stuff. I think when you're here and they don't really have a program of what you really want to do, you can talk a lot of people into making things count for other things <laughs> and so i took a lot of classes in marketing and sort of created videos in that i um took and you're like well this applies to art for this reason yeah, I mean, that I kind of thing take like sculpting and like painting and drawing, and <laughs> yeah I, it, like i didn't really enjoy those things photography classes i really liked yeah sure but that was probably the biggest thing that i could do but anyway when i graduated um i was still working here at that job that i had planned on quitting like three years prior <laughs> yeah and then they had hired another person to teach those filmmaking classes in art. And so because I was still working here, I just paid to take one class at a time. And I just kept taking the same classes over and over again and making movies in them. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> and then That's pretty solid. Yeah. And then I was still working that job. And then, and then meanwhile, that job turned into a bigger job because the, the URI facet of that, of where I was working, um, uh, people created a, a for-profit company out of it and then they hired me and they were like well we'll give you this full-time job and pay you this salary and give you benefits and I was like oh okay oh my god so I started doing <laughs> that and then I was able to teach I was able to take these classes at the same time so I felt like I was still going to school here but yet getting paid to work full-time and like leaving to take class so you just like happened upon that full-time job um, because I was working in that other place, they yeah. were like, we're starting this company and you know how to do these certain things that we're going to do in this company. So like, do you want to come work for us too? And I'm like, okay, you have to understand that I've never really applied for many jobs in my life. They've just sort of come to me. It's been really weird the way it's all worked. And I can sort of tell you about that, but, um, yeah, so I got that job and then, um, I was applying to grad school yeah. based on the fact that I was taking these courses and like making work and sort of creating a portfolio. Sure. And, um, I got accepted, uh, but I had, hadn't had been at this job for, like, it would have been under a year. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, I really don't want to leave yet because now they're paying me, you know, at the time, which was a decent amount of money for a full-time job. And I was like, oh, I'm going to quit this job and, like, move to Boston and go to school and, like, now have tons of debt or whatever. So I was able to defer the enrollment for a year. And the place that accepted me is, isn't really where I really wanted to go. So it's like, well, if I defer this enrollment for a year and I apply to all these places again, I can either go to Emerson or I can see if I can get into somewhere else. And so that's what I did. So I stayed for another year. I applied again. Yeah, you went through the application cycle again. Yeah, I got into BU. I said no to Emerson. And then I left to go to uh, BU. Um, but this company was still like, well, we'll still pay you to do some side projects for us on the side. Oh, wow. Boston. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then I got some assistantships in Boston and whatever, and then I was there for um, two and a half years. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. So and So I, the firsthand film experience kind of comes from, like, you were just making movies in those filmmaking classes? I mean, so you have to understand that I got a video camera in 1986, and people didn't really have, like, that wasn't, yeah, Teenagers didn't thing. have video cameras in 1986. I think my parents paid, like, $1,000 for it. Holy shit. At the time. And it was just a giant VHS. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, but, you know, growing up, we, we shot on Super 8 film. So uh-huh. I had sort of done a lot of that type of thing. Um, and I knew that the classes in the art department taught on, when I started, taught on Super 8 film and 16mm. Okay, so really you're like, this is my wheelhouse, I got really this a little bit. All I to do is take a class and shoot on 16mm film, yeah. but I took the Super 8 class, and then that faculty member passed away, and so oh, I yeah. took, took the other thing. But it wasn't until afterwards that then I was able to, so I, I first shot on 16 in, uh, and probably in 1997, maybe. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, and then we started doing stuff like that, and then that's where I sort of got into it. So that's cool. Is it like, was that in any way kind of the precursor to what we kind of do in your narrative classes now where it's like literally like kind of there's a broad structure, but you're just like write a script, make a movie, that kind of thing? Or was it like rigid? No, I mean, back then, I mean, and also and I think a lot of the course in the art department is still run this way. And I think that even when and and it was weird because years later I was teaching those courses, Mm -hmm. which was really bizarre to me. The same courses that you were taking? Yeah. yeah, Okay. Yeah. 
So it was much more freer. Like people just came in with ideas. It wasn't really so much narrative structure. Based it was just like I like, want to make this video. Like yeah, it, it, like we like sort of talked about ideas and we went out and we experimented with stuff and shot stuff and then we bring the footage back and we look at it as a group and we talk about like what we wanted to do with it and maybe what di- what direction we want to go with it. Oh, and that's cool. We go out and shoot some more and then at some point we sort of cut it together. Mm-hmm. At that point we were cutting together by hand. So we yeah, were like sure. Running the film through viewers and splicing it and taping it together and whatever. Um, and I just remember being much like, this is really cool. Like we get to go because up until that point, besides the photo classes, there were, weren't classes that like we could go and just sort of like share ideas. Everything was very structured, right? Like I was taking all classes like in the business department and marketing. And yeah. Just like gen eds where it was like you go, you read a book, you do this, blah, 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 blah. So from that perspective, yeah, I mean, I think that when I teach the classes now, a lot of times, and I was having a conversation with another faculty member the other day that like, you know, when, for instance, in the class you're taking with me where we look at scripts, it's like, I have no idea, like, so we're showing up on the first day and we're gonna read scripts. I have no idea what we're gonna be talking about. Like, What, you have no idea what the scripts are gonna be or no, anything? Yeah. I mean, I might, if I look at them ahead of time. I yeah, if someone's like, hey, take a like, look at my script. But like, I have no idea that if you present a script about, I don't know, uh, cats. Right? <laughs> and sure. Then, you know, that re- us reading that script in class could sort of make us discuss, like, uh, these films. I mean, who knows? You know what I mean? Somebody might say, well, you know what? This Reading the script made me think of this. And then we might talk about that for a little bit. Or mm-hmm. I might say, oh, you know, I saw a movie at South by Southwest last year that was about this, and it was really interesting. You should look at that to sort of see how it's different or, or the same as yours. Like, what do you want to do with that? Um, so I, I think that that... And I mean, I don't know how you feel about it, but for me, I think that that's really interesting. I feel like going into a class and you're like, okay, we're going to talk about what I want to talk about today. You know, <laughs> I mean, obviously sometimes you have to do that. Yeah, exactly. A lot of times it's like, okay. That's where like the lecture part of lecturing yeah, comes but in. I yeah, mean, but a lot of times it's like, it's not about me. Like, you know, a lot of these classes, it's like, okay. Especially in this field, like the ideas coming from the students are super important. Mm-hmm. Like. Like, you know, like, if you don't, like, learn to sort of work with your own ideas and apply them to what you're learning, like, there's not really much of a point. Sure. Yeah. And, I mean, if you are trying to create things, it's like, all right, well, how do we facilitate to help you actually do that? Mm -hmm. Right? And sometimes it can be a pain, right? Like, it's me saying, you have to fill out these forms. You have to (laughs) be organized. (laughs) Um, Yeah. I've had many a conversation with Dimitri about that. Yeah, but sometimes it's sort of like, all right, well, how, how do we attack this? And, like, maybe... All right, maybe okay. This story is interesting, but like, how do we raise the stakes of the story to make it so like somebody will care about this? Because right now, like, I don't really care about your characters. Like, mm-hmm. why is that? Like, I don't know who is this person, right? Like, why is he this way? How can you figure this out? How do you how do you show that in your movie? Is it something you're going to show through, you know, lighting or camera movement or you know, costume or you know. Uh, flashback or what yeah know? but there's a lot you know like in this we're kind of working with every phase of the production process all right. at once because like i took a screenwriting class this semester with neil murphy and it was like um like it, it kind of had echoes of that beginning portion of like when i was taking your narrative classes where it's like working with the script how do i make how do i raise the stakes of the story how do i make these characters work together a little bit more but um we were very much kind of shying away from talking about it in terms of like producing the actual films, course, yeah. yeah. I mean, but we have to because these because yeah, get made, yeah, they're gonna right? get made. But when you're taking just a purely writing class, like I guess you could write about anything. Like, and I'm like, you can't have a movie that takes place on an airplane or you know something like that. Can we just okay? So I am gonna edit this. Okay. We're gonna pause this real quick, okay. and I'm just gonna make sure that we're getting because there's nothing showing up here, okay. which I'm sure is fine. But okay, so we're back. Okay. Oh, look, there's my levels. Yeah, we're, they're showing up now. It's all good. Okay. Shout out to Tony, who uh, actually, I did get him on the podcast. That's like our third episode. Of, oh, like, good. The, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I talked to him a while ago. He told me a bunch of like crazy stories about like apparently he's also from Pennsylvania, mm-hmm. but he's from like like middle of nowhere. Hicksville, Pennsylvania. Yeah, totally. Like, um, So yeah, he had some pretty interesting stories for me. He like... No, he like... <laughs> I don't know if he does this on purpose. But, like, every time I talk to him and he's just like, oh, yeah, it was this, 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 and this, I feel really stupid. Like, I'm just like, oh, I should have known that. Well, listen, you know, I mean, I think you have to really be fool around with stuff for a while before you can troubleshoot it. Yeah. You know? So what was it? There was another console? Yeah, the console where you actually fiddle with the actual, like, like, 
real settings. But it was mics. weird because you could see my levels over there, like yeah, on like track appearing two, on the on the, thing, on yeah. the, the monitor. Well, he he said it was turned all the way down, right? Okay. So I think what that means is it was picking up, but just a tiny little bit. Okay. So, okay. but any in any case, we're back. It's okay. Keith. We're not right. starting over. We're keeping going. Okay. What were we even talking about, man? Do we I even have remember? No, I don't remember. <laughs> uh, the classes that I took here, but yeah. then we were talking about. You were talking about your screenwriting class and how you know you're not really worried about it from a production standpoint. Yeah, yeah. Where it's like it's like. Um, so did you write a, a a short film for this class? Yes, I wrote two. I wrote a, like the the first one I think is a, like five to ten page. Okay. The second one is fifteen to twenty. Okay. And uh, it was pretty funny because like um, I wrote. You remember that like bullshit script I wrote where it's like I wrote about the time I got bit by a service dog. Yes. Yeah. So I kind of wrote one that's kind of like that for my first one. Okay. Like I just wrote like a kind of bullshit like, hey, I have this idea and this idea and this that. I worked from the top down. Okay. I got the superficial details of like this is a cool idea for a setting and like uh, this is like, and I worked down. By the end of it, I was like, I don't know what the hell the story is actually about. Yeah. Like, it's about nothing. So when you write these scripts in this class, do you then, like, workshop them? Or are you talking to each other about them? Or are yeah. you reading each other's yeah, work? Yeah, we have, like, um, yeah, we, we have we, we have written feedback, and then we go in the class the next day. He'll send us, like, read these scripts for this class. And okay. then we come in, and we, we, we workshop them a little bit. Oh, nice. Uh, we, the thing is, though, we don't, like, like he didn't require uh, revisions to be handed in. So okay. it's, like, it could be just completely nothing. Okay. Um. But yeah, I, I, I switched that around for the second script and I tried to work. I'm like, okay, what do I want this story to be about? And then I kind of worked my way up from that. Okay. So I did learn a little bit about screenwriting, which I um, always just kind of took for granted that I was really bad at. Like, yeah. I'm just like, I'm just like, I don't know how to, like, I'm really good at deconstructing stories, but I just can't work the other way around. Okay. Um, but yeah, I did, I did improve that a little bit. So it's like, I, I kind of feel like, weird about my experience in this film program because i feel like i really didn't get my shit together until like a year ago okay because you remember when we i like um me and dimitri who was on the podcast where we worked like a little bit we went to the rhode island international film festival last summer right and um i had this thing where i was caught like a deer in the headlights keith handed me a, 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 D, a dslr and was like do this this and this and i'm like i don't know how to do that yeah. man like <laughs> Just because that had never been, like, I feel like for the first couple of years, I just, like, coasted yeah. a little bit. It's hard because we, we had a talk back session at the end of the advanced class this year, too, and people were talking about things and, you know, what they liked and what they didn't like. And, and they were saying, you know, well, I wish I could have known I could have taken this and this, and I wish I could have known I could have taken this. And, like, it's all there, but sometimes if you're not really – motivated to figure it out like yeah. it can just pass it just gets away from really you, yeah. quickly yeah um i'm sorry i guess okay. yeah gotta stay hydrated um <laughs> but yeah that that conversation was kind of like it kind of kicked me in the ass a little bit so like i got i'm not sure if it was after that or even before but um i got my own dslr i started with like a like a T like a T six or something like that. Mm -hmm. Like a Canon T six, just like a one that's like kind of primarily made for photos. Um, which like are they all primarily for that? Yeah, <laughs> I mean like, I think they all when all those DSLRs first came out, they I mean they were all basically photo cameras that could take that could just take this a video, high definition yeah. video. Yeah. But it's like I don't even use any of the photo settings. Even yeah. when I take photos, which I have to do for my job with the career center, like yeah. like I was just taking staff headshots. Um I would even I would just I would just get I would just keep it in the video mode and just get stills yeah, like yeah, that's all yeah. that's all I ever did. Yeah. But um and then eventually what do I have now? I have a 60 now, okay. which I been which I've been using for um for the job at the career center and for the videos on my YouTube channel and so I'm like learning my way around that a little bit more. The shit that I should have been learning in film 110, basically I'm kind of catching up and doing now. Yeah. Yeah. Which is like you know it's whatever it's fine. Do, do you feel like that it would have been helpful to force? I mean, that's that's the other thing that I always think about too is that with film one ten, it's like you know you're the, you have these group projects and like if you want to use the camera, then it's sort of your own. You got to get your hands on it type of thing. Just breathing. Oh, um, <laughs> but like you know, there's another sort of train of thought that it's like you force everybody to do something with the camera. But yeah, I feel like. And that's kind of the, 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 the conversation about, like, whether – because, like, I kind of hated all the side projects because I felt like it detracted from, like, the time that we actually spent working on the main project, right. which is the movies. Right. But 
when you're confined to one role and you don't get to you know experience a lot of the different equipment you don't really get like the most well-rounded right kind of thing which i feel like is really really important because mm -hmm. like you're not like unless you're like stupid good at whatever it is that thing is like when you graduate and you get like some kind of production assistant job or whatever you know you're not going to be that one thing that you always did in the narrative classes sure. at college you kind of sure. have to be well-rounded sure so i i don't know like yeah. i don't know whether it would have been more helpful to kind of be pushed into doing things because like i i was always uncomfortable with the camera yeah because it's like to me that was the most direct like like pre to post production that's the most important part and if the camera fucks up then the whole thing is kind of fucked so are you afraid like you'd make a mistake and it would all be your fault type yes of <laughs> pretty much yeah i mean well, which so i feel like it's, that's kind of a thing that you have to get out of yeah. when over the course of your time and i think and i think that when you're in a position where you're in the advanced class at, like at that point like probably that's not going to be the time where you're going to try something new and say hey i want to do camera now i've yeah, never exactly. done this before right yeah but it's like um, I couldn't all of a sudden just decide to be a DP in the right, advanced class. Like it right, just doesn't work. Right. But like all those little assignments there too, and we did a few more of them this semester. Um, like, uh, did you take it in the fall? Yeah. Yeah. Did we have? A, we didn't have a scene. We had just the interviews, right? We had the interviews. Uh, no, we had a we had a short scene. We did. We did. Yeah. Okay. So I did it again this semester, but I required it to be done w much, 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 much earlier. And I think good, next. Good call. And I think next year. I'm not only gonna have that be like something that people are working on on week two, but I also want to do something where they're forced into an acting role to sort of experience what casting is like, ah. I think. To like read sides or something while another person films them. I, I don't know how this will go, but I think it would be helpful to give them the experience of what it's like on the other side of the camera. But so anyway, those, you know, and I assigned, I, I don't know if I did this a lot, but I assigned production roles based on what people wanted to do. But the thing is, is that you're right. Like people can get pigeonholed into a certain aspect of production. Like if yeah, you just which do sound is... all the time, then they're just going to be like, oh, Sal does sound. <laughs> Sal does sound, you know? Yeah. Um, I feel like that was kind of like where I ended up because like, well, on, I, I was usually, I, I was either sound or script supervisor on production but then what I really wanted to do, because, like, this is the kind of, like, the little nugget of, like, okay, this is, like, super valuable. I'm so glad that I learned this. Not to say that it's the only valuable thing I ever learned. Right. But um, everybody everybody makes fun and hates the, the tough all-over assignment that mm -hmm. you make us do. Mm -hmm. That being, for context, it's like um, – um, Not everybody. I have proof that not everybody hates that. No, you have, you have li living proof right here. That's the shit that taught me how to edit, which is what I like doing. Like, that's, that's, that's what I do. But it's like um, – it's like that's like the, the the student produced short film in one of your classes from like years prior, right? Like, like what? Tough, tough all over. over. No, yeah. that was my thesis film at Boston University. That was your thesis yeah. film at Boston University. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, that was okay. shot in two thousand and one. Yeah. Solid. Yeah. That's cool. But, somebody um, actually tried to buy somebody else's cut this year for them for a hundred dollars. Wait, what? Yeah. Some I I heard a rumor from students in the classes this year that. Somebody didn't want to do it, and so he oh, so they're like, offered, I'll pay you a hundred dollars for your project. That, yeah, like, mm -hmm. is it like a from the same class or like someone who did a year before or something like that? No, it's the same class. Jesus Christ, yeah. that's crazy. Yeah, it's listen, like, if, you, if like, I knew I could have been selling these things, I would have started selling them. I would have been, <laughs> yeah. I would have had a lot of money. I would have had sixteen hundred dollars, no, three thousand dollars a semester. Yeah, there you go. But um, yeah, everybody like. Everybody, everybody makes everybody makes fun of that assignment, but it's like that. Well, like I, I'm like, am I, I'm like, am I the only one who like actually really, really? Yeah. This like, this semester, somebody was like, you know, I know everybody's complaining about this, but I really have enjoyed doing this. Yeah. And so, I mean, the thing is, it's like I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna have assignments that are. I mean, sometimes I'll try things, and I would be the first one to say, okay, this did not work. Like, yeah, totally. That those two years we did the music video. <laughs> yeah. That did not work the way I <laughs> planned it. And again, that was really just to sort of see if there were other people. Like, for instance, you who wanted to get on camera, then that might be a, a less threatening way of doing it because you're filming something that isn't as sort of stressful as a narrative thing, but you can sort of get more exposure. Yeah, it's just something camera. where you can like play, you can play but I, with different But roles. I found that if I, for those little projects that if I don't have super strict deadlines, what happens is that everybody's People like, put them well, off these, and then they these are not nowhere near as important as what we're doing for our main project and they don't do them. And then it's like the end of the semester and it's like, where's your music video, you know? Um, so in the scenes, sometimes people end up writing like open letters on why we shouldn't have to do it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I think that that could be something that comes back in another way, shape or form. But the scenes this year, I think were good. What I did differently is I said, okay, 
So Sal's group, you're going to shoot the scene, but it's going to be by the light of the television. And you guys are going to group the scene, and it's going to be by moonlight. And you guys are going to shoot Ooh. the scene, and you only have to use natural light. And so they had to really come up with a scenario where the lighting would work. Even though there was a failure moonlight. in this assignment, too, where one group assumed when I said that I wanted it to be lit with practicals, I, what I really meant was that I wanted the practicals to be the motivating light in the scene, not that you should just use one lamp to light your scene oh. <laughs> so they just literally stuck a lamp in the middle of the two of them and then the lighting was horrible right because yeah, it was yeah. just a lamp and i was like but where are the lights and they're like well you told us to use practicals and i was like oh crap i meant like you what i meant, meant like was that i want like the, this, the right? lamp should be in the scene we should understand that that's where the light's coming from but really you're lighting it as if that light oh. lamp is lighting the people so it looked like poop basically yeah, well, yeah, because totally. it was just a lamp you know, and then they did their interviews with the same lighting setup. So then I made mo almost all the groups oh, wow. except two redo all their interviews because yeah. they were so bad. Yeah, I was talking to them. someone in that class, and they're like, "Well, maybe we'll just redo the interviews." Yeah, yeah, and I'm like, Ugh. "But you know what? <laughs> so uh, I think the interviews that are in the opening sequence this year are pretty good. And then um, what I want to start doing is sort of cutting together those interviews more with the films and sort of create another sort of." little piece to show like what people did because they sort of talk about what they were doing so we'll see i, I want to use them somewhere else but again like i think it's important even for that setup for them to know sort of how that setup would work because mm. we've been doing stuff where we've gotten hired and we paid students to do setups like that and so if they don't if they haven't done it before then it might be a little intimidating to sort yeah, of do yeah, it you definitely know? So. um that video you should the stuff that rhode island film festival video is up online now do you know that Really? Yeah. It's on like there. there. It's, on, there? it's on our YouTube page. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you can look at cool. it. Cool. That's cool though. Um But yeah, like I, I feel like it's it's kind of important. Um because like like every like like out of all the all the professors, all the mentors, all the teachers that you have, you have to have at least one that's kind of got like a like a, like a like a a, a, a certain intolerance for bullshit mm -hmm. which i feel like that's the role that you kind of fill there's <laughs> <laughs> a lot of bullshit happening right now but right yeah. right now right now or well just it's like at the general? end of it's the end of the semester it's like everybody's trying to get stuff done and it's, it's always like, but i did i did that yeah. i'm like really <laughs> did you did you though? i don't think you did. did you do it well um yeah and like you know 110 students were like wait what's the final folder about and i'm like uh it went with your film and it was due two days ago like and it's like it's to make sure that all of your work is organized and right. that you're not just turning in a mess right. and every year i try and avoid like that you know weird middle of the night binder drop off at my house from oh my some God. student that has to <laughs> has deliver that it happened to me. oh all the time seriously every, at your every house? semester yeah <laughs> every semester it's what happens is so what happens is the screenings tomorrow i'll collect everything and i'll sit down and i'll start to grade and i'll be like why didn't why don't these people have a binder or i'll look at the binder and be like this literally is the crappiest thing i've ever seen it looks like a, it's <laughs> yeah. looks like a second grader put it together uh -huh. and i'll just message the group and be like um this binder is really horrible like and really it should be i mean you know that it should be all the stuff you've already done you should just put it in a binder nicely <laughs> yeah not That's it's, never the, how it it's happens, the day though. of the screening and you're trying to like create call sheets that you never had in the first place yeah so um yeah and it was funny because hasbro came did they come this semester? You didn't. I mean, I don't. I don't. I don't. They remember, came this semester, and I know they've kind of had like a tan, like a like a. Yeah, like they a gave a presentation, the and uh, the some of the producers in the class were like, "So, if you're a producer, like, what would we show you?" And he's like, "Well, if you had a binder of all your work to show your pre-production, I was like, see." <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> it's like, boom. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, but we'll see when it goes on. So yeah. the screening, it looks like it's two and a half hours. This this semester it is yeah oh boy is that long or is that like um it's not too bad how long how long was it last semester was uh, it it was long last I've, semester I've had it? semesters where it's three hours long <sighs> yeah or maybe even more which is rough that's crazy is it yeah. always um is it is it um the 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 the, the senior seminar class and then the phantom class this yeah, semester? yeah but the phantom class we only shot we shot four movies through the course of the whole class. Mm -hmm. And then um, what happened was, was one of them the pillow fight one. Pillow fight is one. Okay, of them. I wasn't sure if that was the one coming from that class. Yeah, so pillow fight yeah. film fan. I just get snippets of like what's going on yeah. from like the the Instagram, the, ru the ruler, and uh, leftover. So we shot four scripts. I think Brandon wrote two of two or three of them. Which David might have wrote one. Is he? <laughs> I think Dimitri told me 
Is he like, he's the TA for that class? Yeah. And he wrote two of the scripts that are being produced? Yeah, because I think. They voted, right? Yeah. we. That's I think weird. everybody came in. Every, yeah, everybody came in with a script. And they're just like, and, we like these ones the best. Oh, and Alex Corey wrote one, but it was the same script that he's been literally submitting to every class of mine for the last three semesters. And finally, it got chosen. Oh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so, but yeah, so we shot. So out of what's 13 weeks, that gave us time to shoot four films in class. So each film took about four, eight, like maybe 10 hours, give or take, or mm-hmm. maybe more than that. So like the class starts at six, but we'd start like setting up at like four, four thirty, and then sometimes it would ah, be. So you actually did start like setting up pre yeah. emptively this semester, yeah. as and opposed then... to like as opposed to like showing up at six and not. Well, or... when they they were bad at it at first, like because <laughs> yeah. some people wouldn't be like, oh, I didn't know I was supposed to come now, or they were scheduling it, and be like, well, I have a class, but they they gave that person the stuff to bring, so. The first two films we shot, it was all like 16 students and it was really, really super chaotic because yeah. there's too many people. And then they decided that it would be a good idea that for the second set of films that we would split them in half. So we'd have like eight and eight. Eight people working on this film. Which was better, but then we started running over our time and then it was like, well, what do we do with the other people while we're shooting this? Because like, right, the Phantom has to be with me. and Yeah. So that became a little bit challenging, and then um, we had a really bad night one night where um, I hadn't had time to dump the card, and they were shooting um, the movie, the Pillow Fight movie downstairs, and mm-hmm. the card filled up, and then for the last like so many shots, they weren't actually recording, and we had to stop. Oh. So we had to tell everybody, okay, well, it's Monday night, but we are all coming back this weekend to shoot the rest of this movie. Oh. Yeah. Oh, that's the worst. So, but, you know, I, I think... Um, we, so we watched, and it was a little painstaking because on this past Monday, we watched all the cuts everybody did. So, like, we had, like, let's say five of these, five of these, six of these, six of these. And then we assessed, like, the editing and color and then picked a winner from each one. And so that's the movie that will be screened because everybody edited oh. this, everybody edited one of the first groups of movies and one of the second groups of movies. Yeah. So, um, so you had m- multiple people editing the same film, and then like, we voted. Oh wow! Yeah, because they all the, the process of it all was to shoot in 4K, um, down res, edit, go to DaVinci, bring it back to 4K, color, export it, and finish back in Premiere. <sighs> that's crazy, yeah. man. That's like that's too much. But they could <laughs> work in groups <laughs> of me. two or by themselves. Alex Corey won two of the cuts, and Sean Campbell won two of the cuts, along with David was one of them, and then um, Gina. Um, did an awesome job doing the ruler, which is literally, I think, hysterical. And uh, what's it about? <laughs> so it's about. Can you even explain. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a little uh, risque. It's about uh, uh, this woman played by Layla, whose boyfriend, husband, I don't know, it's Panny. He's dead yeah. on the floor. Okay. And he has a bruise. Oh, I remember now. Right. I remember on his face, and yep. so then David. It, en- it ends up they're measuring his dick or something. Right. right? Yeah. David and Chris Anderson come in, and David is a Swedish detective. I don't know why. And Chris is a <laughs> Chris is a Southern detective. Again, I don't know why. And they both have fake mustaches that look completely ridiculous. And they decide that they have to now start measuring everybody to see who committed this crime. And um, the dialogue is very funny. Brandon, yeah. Brandon did a really good job with the script. And their accents are really quirky, which makes it really interesting. Yeah, um, I can't imagine either of those accents. Their names, out of of those their guys. names work into the script in a weird way, and then the ending is very bizarre, also. But one of the interesting things is is that we watched all the cuts, and there was another one that cut that uh, Marion and Penny did was pretty good. But Gina actually added a zipper sound, and that made all the difference in the world in terms of how funny this is. Because obviously we're not showing anything, but when David starts to measure things, it's really funny when you start hearing you... a zipper. <laughs> so, yeah. So that's that's the ruler. <laughs> um, yeah. So oh we, spent, we literally spent like three and a half hours watching cuts the other night. And oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So um, those will play. So, I mean, that's in, in a way – in a way, I feel like it should be shorter because that's a class that's only showing four. three, four very short films. Yeah, like I think Leftover might be like maybe three minutes. But are the are the four ninety five ones? There's two four ninety five ones that are very long. Um, yeah. So then that. And also, like I, I remember Dimitri telling me, is there like was there either a bunch of like there's a bunch of people or you guys were like voting on a on a bunch of different scripts? 
or something like that. For like, the for the four four ninety five. Yeah, wasn't there like eight scripts or something like that? Well, like, so I mean, and this is another thing I keep trying to figure out a better way to do this, but I really haven't figured it out yet. But you know, at the beginning of the semester, everybody brings in their scripts. They're like, we all want to direct, right? And there's yeah. you know so many people and, and like, I'm glad I got out of that this. before I before I ended up in the class. Do you think you would have? Do you think you ever would have directed? No. <laughs> because why? Well, I mean, I, I kind of just thought that was the natural evolution of it. Yeah. Like when I ended up taking 495, which I thought was going to be in this semester, mm-hmm. not 445 last semester mm-hmm. before like, you know, my, my whole my whole plan shifted. Mm-hmm. But I just thought that's where it ends up. Okay. You know, you're in it for you're in it for a little while doing like different various production roles, and then you know you write your own thing and you direct it. And I mean, for and some, that's kind of your senior project. Yeah. And for some people, that's the way it goes. But like, it goes. like for me, I had to wrestle with the fact that it's like, okay, I don't, I don't know how to write. I don't know how to write a script. I don't know how mm-hmm. to do, like. I don't know how to make it compelling enough to to shoot. And I also don't know how to direct because I'm not very authoritative at least mm-hmm. not yet mm-hmm. especially with this group of people like but and I think that that comes with time and it comes with experience and like even this semester there were some um some projects and then the director said something like well I didn't you know I can't I was like oh you need to really reshoot this this scene is a mess and really you should reshoot it she's like well I can't tell them to like what to do and I was like but yeah that's what a <laughs> that's director your job, does yeah. yeah and I mean obviously you're rescheduling like actors that you might have to pay and you need to but like you say to the crew like we have to reshoot this what day can we do it mm-hmm. like here are the options and the, it's either you can or you can't and if you can't then we have to find somebody else to replace you I mean that that's the thing it's like it's hard because you have to get you have to be a little bit more aggressive but yet in a way where you're not pissing people off yeah and if the people are invested in your project, for the most part, they want to succeed because they sort yeah. of seem to have like some ownership. The, the, the in idea it. is that you're working towards a common goal. Right. There's usually, right. like, like you know, there's sometimes one person who, like, doesn't really. Yeah. And that always happens. But, and, and you know, we were just at, uh, I, I went to see, uh, to tour the BU grad program with Tyler last week, and they had changed it around because they were having trouble with sometimes people not finishing their thesis films because they'll start it and then. People are like they get a job somewhere and they're like, eh, I'm not going to even finish this degree, so I'm just going to do this. But then, you know, if you were getting credit on that movie and it wasn't done, That's that a, affects you. Yeah. So by having it in a shorter term, they were thinking that that would sort of like um, lessen that to happen, right? Because the program wasn't going on for so long that people yeah. were like moving on to other things within that year. People would start. People. People would like drop it halfway through like their thesis film or something like that once they got like an opportunity or they'd or something? shoot it like or they'd shoot the film and then they were like sort of eh about it and then they got a job somewhere and they're like oh yeah, whatever right, i'm just Screw gonna do film. this i'm not even gonna bother getting oh, this getting this master's i'm just gonna just go you know so um yeah which is which is weird but yeah so yeah, I mean it should be a, a decent screening. Um, I saw the opening uh, a few days ago, uh, which was good, which I'm glad because we've had some problems with those uh, for the last. Well, few like years. the intros or whatever with yeah, all the with yeah, all the yeah. BTS. We and started the having complaints. <laughs> We're like, my parents think that this is too long or whatever. And I was like, okay, well, like it, it's hard because what what's been happening is like I used to always cut those uh-huh. and I used to really enjoy cutting it and I used to spend a lot of time because I would go back and find footage of those students from like when they first started in like my archives of hard drives, which is really tough because I'd be like, okay, Sal, when did he take from 110? All right, well maybe he took it this year. And then I'd go back and be like, oh, here he is like at the beat shooter in the fine art shoot or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And then I'd like cut that in and it would be like embarrassing because you guys look different or whatever, or funny <laughs> or whatever. But um, you know the past Freshman, few yeah, that's back before I had a beard. Yeah, that's the weird. past few years, can't even remember it's, that. it's that's been not really real. yeah, it's been really hard because the teaching assistants that I've had for the classes, I'm like, well, this should really be their job mm-hmm. because it's a lot to coordinate. I mean, and you know, getting behind the scenes footage from every project, it's like I need your behind the scenes stuff or I need bloopers, and it's like, oh yeah, I have it on a hard drive, I'll get it to you, blah 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 blah, and then like and then they just, don't yeah, never. So um, see, that's something that you never ran in with with me. I feel like I should have been doing behind the scenes way earlier than I actually was because yeah. I love doing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was my shit. Yeah. yeah, yeah that yeah. was like um Yeah, I don't know. I felt really comfortable in that role in particular. Yeah. yeah. And there was one weekend where there were like four movies shooting. So it's like, well, I can't go to all these places. Yeah, you can't so get like BTS from it everybody. would be help- yeah, yeah. it was helpful that the TA could like show up to a few of those as well. Yeah. Um 
So, um, and you know, in a way I hate giving over control of doing that to somebody else. Cause I wanted to be a certain way, but I was like, you know what? I, I trust them, but I'm going to just make sure that I can sit down and actually watch the whole thing before it's exported because last year it was done and then they made a change, but it messed up all the keyframes. I don't know if you remember that, like every time someone was going to talk, it like got louder instead of softer because they added a clip and it pushed all the music down and all the keyframes went all messed up. Oh, and it's I think hard. I remember that, it's yeah. hard because it's the first thing that we see or hear at the screening yeah, and to so have it, it be problematic it, yeah. is like, okay, well, you know, so anyway, um, yeah, so so we should be good. I mean, like, I know Sonny's exporting right now. Um, I think that somebody else told me, and I just pointed, and this person on the other side of the window, like, I think thought I was pointing at him. But, um, <laughs> yeah, and I, I don't know. I don't know who's – I haven't looked at the drive, but, um, you know, that's tomorrow. Were so. people, like, uh, camping here? For, is, um, it, is it very is it very much crunch time? Yeah, I mean, for some of them, I don't know. Is Dimitri? Where's Dimitri? Is he I finishing? Don't know. Oh, okay. No, I like I don't I I, I um I, I shot BTS for him, for one of his shoot days, but yeah, our schedules didn't really coincide, so I couldn't really help him out that much. I made the poster for him. Oh, good. That was about it. Yeah. I don't even think we. I don't even know if he gave us that BTS stuff that he had because I think that there wasn't any for his project. Oh, wow, really? Yeah. I can give it to you. I have it. The, the things. I mean, I'll take it if you want, just to have it. But the yeah. thing, the opening is done, they used other footage. I mean, that's the thing is that a lot of the students were in both the Phantom and the th other thing, which is now becoming super problematic when they have stuff due for both things and like they don't have time to finish it and they're just like, "But I'm trying to finish my movie." And I was like, "I know, but like you were also in this other class." Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So we should be good, hopefully. Mm -hmm. Okay. Big question. Big question. Big question time. What, like, is, is there anything that would you, like, like above all else that you want your students to take away from being in your classes? Like, okay, if you learn anything, like, big concepts, anything like that, like, were you like, okay, if, they, if there's anything you learn over the course of taking my, cl my, my courses, whether that's 110 or the advanced courses or whatever, what might that be? Well, so, I mean, if you're talking about over, I mean, I think there's things that they should take from each individual course specifically, yeah. right? But, I mean, overarchingly, I think that it's it's really important that, you know, they learn how to collaborate with people mm. and to express their ideas. And, you know, it's hard sometimes to be heard when you're in a group of people and, like, there maybe there's somebody that sort of has a more powerful voice than you have. Yeah. Um, but sort of try and... and and have these discussions and critiques about things um, and to sort of keep improving in a way I think is really important. Yeah. So like collaboration is really, really important. Learning Definitely. how to be like part of it because that's what like, that's what a production is. It's sure. like, it's very much like a group of people who have to be giving it their all to work towards a common goal because if a common goal, because you have, if you have one weak link, it could compromise the, like the, the integrity of the whole project right and it's hard when people are in the classes and they're not as invested as the other people yeah because then if you sort of you know i don't know get stuck isn't really right the best term but yeah if you, if you, if you phone if you phone it in you're affecting a lot working of with you work. and then like it just gets everybody else gets frustrated yeah. because you're not doing as much but it also could be that you know some people are expecting a lot more from their crew than others too yeah does know? that happen like because my thinking was whenever someone would kind of be phoning it in i can't really think of any specific examples not that i would name them like here but does that happen in the like the professional world where you have someone on a set who's like i don't even know why i'm really here no like, i i i don't think it when cuz i feel like once you get to that point where it's like this when you're is getting what i'm paid, doing you, i mean you shouldn't be at that yeah, point like, you're not going they're not going to bring somebody in and be paying them if they're just like you know one of the things that happens with us right is they're like oh i've never used this sound recorder before it's like uh okay <laughs> you know um that's not going to happen i mean unless you're working and getting volunteers you know what i mean like it could happen like even out of school where you're sort of like trying to get a crew together and you can just get what you can yeah you know like there has to be some amount of people who like fail up yeah to a point where it's like they're working on a professional movie yeah. set but i've heard stories about i've heard stories about people that have been hired that you know um it's problematic because they're not really meshing with either the director or the producer or things like that and yeah it's not that they don't know what they're doing but it's like their their personality they don't really know work how to... styles don't really mesh yeah. together and it becomes really problematic because you know or they have a chip on their shoulder for some other reason 
and they're acting this way because of something else that's personal and it has nothing to do with the Yeah, with it's the like shoot. whatever it is, leave it at the door. Right. And yeah. now it's like, okay, well, you're slowing us down and you're making this hard for us to complete because your attitude, you know? Yeah. But, you know, in that in that instance, you know, if, if you really, depending upon the situation, but you could say, hey, we don't want you here anymore. In a class, it's very, you can't, you can't really that, yeah. do that. You can't be you like, can't. all right, uh, you know, Joe, whoever, uh, you're not really, you're basically sitting around doing nothing. Like, we don't want you on the set anymore. Because then yeah. that person's like, well, where do I go? You know? And you got to be careful because. You can find your way into another project. Yeah, if you're you lucky, can. But... The other thing that becomes problematic about all of this stuff is like, okay, well, at what point could this also be, you know, a popularity contest? And this happens with the scripts too, because I'm always saying, like, we're, we're going to vote on the scripts. Like, we can't shoot all these, we're going to vote on them. But it could really be like, okay, well, I'm friends with Sal, so we're all going to vote on for his, his script. script. Yeah. Right? Even though it's not good. Even though, yeah, yeah. Like, if that were the so, case, I'm not sure if people would vote for my script, know. but yeah, no, it would be shit. So. But, I mean, the last few semesters, I took a poll and said, all right, if we were going to shoot X number of these movies, which one, which ones would we pick? And, like, what they picked, even though I didn't say, okay, you can't do this anymore, basically were what we ended up having. Yeah. I think that the stronger strip, the stronger strips, the stronger <laughs> scripts do sort of rise to the top in yeah. that situation, you know, because students realize. Some, yeah, there are some that usually, like, there's a couple that stand out as, like, Okay, everybody's kind of on the same page. It's the same page. We all really want to shoot this. Yeah. Right. Where it's yeah. like, the, it, like even, like where it would just be, yeah, like pe people would just think it would be fun or right. like a good experience, right. or it's just a really, really good script that right. they want to shoot. Right. So yeah, I, I, I definitely realize that. Yeah, it's like, um, some certain scripts just like people want to shoot them. You know, people. Wanna yeah, I mean, people came in this semester with these really, really long scripts that had really, really complex storylines many many different locations and Ugh. you know all the feedback both from me and the other students were like this is not doable in this semester yeah there's no way and when that maybe happened, that thing that you were talking about where it's like if you want to do it over a year right, maybe right but, but like, then it's like you also now have just basically made the decision for all these other students that they are not going to sign on to this because they know it's too much so I'm not going to say I'm going to help you with this because I know that it's just – it's too much work for you and it would also be too much work for me. Yeah. So then those scripts sort of die and sometimes the people are like, yeah, I get, I get what you were saying and sometimes they get bitter about it because yeah. they're like, but I wanted to do this. Especially when it's a senior, it's their last semester and they're like, <laughs> I am making – I mean I've done had this before. Like uh, I am making my movie. Yeah. I don't care what you say. Like I'm going to get a crew together and I'm going to make the movie. And yeah. Like, Oh God! You know, um, I'm not sure if you're referring to anything specific, but I have something in mind. I remember something specific. It's, it's happened many times. Yeah, I can see. I can see you that know? being and a pretty common thing. And sometimes the movie gets made and it's a disaster, and sometimes the movie never gets made. Sometimes they end up making something else and want to add it on last minute to the screening. That could happen too. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I haven't really figured out a better way to do it. The only thing I can think of is like to have some other class where you could sort of get the same experience but not have it be so intense or maybe have a class where you're doing directing exercises or something like that. And it's yeah. not so much about making a final film and that way you get more experience doing that. And then when you get to this class, you're like, okay, well I've directed before I directed a scene before. Didn't I see something about that where it's like, there's some kind of 200 or 300 level class where it's like intermediate. Yeah. So there's a, starting in September, there's going to be a 220 class, which is now a, a class that's in between 110 and 351, which is great. That's solid. Yeah. But that top Topic is going to change all the time, just like sure, yeah, yeah. one would change. So, so, like one semester, it might be directing exercises or something. Sure, like that? it could be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it could be that you know we offer some things that were offered as three fifty ones before as two twenties. Like I don't know, you know, like where does twenty something? Twenty something. Where does twenty somethings <laughs> fall on this thing? Should it more be a two twenty? Is it still a three fifty one? You know, I, I don't know. I, you know yeah. I don't know. Um, so yeah, so we get a so it's first offered in the fall. It's going to be sort of more of an experimental uh, production After Effects class, um, and so then we'll sort of see where it goes from there. Yeah, what's like what are, what are your thoughts on if um, there were to be some kind of like a like a much less um, I don't know I don't really know how to say it, but something more focused on 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 like not necessarily viral but digital media. And like like sort of brand focused media more suited for something like something something like YouTube or even something like Instagram as opposed to a more a more professional like something like something like that like um 
something like a four forty five or something like that. Yeah, you I mean that, I that's think something that could fit into like a two twenty. So you, yeah, I mean you're sort of thinking about making videos that would be you'd want to go viral or making videos not necessarily viral, but like with a little bit lower of a production value that's like um more suited to like like sort of indep independent web content creation. So do you think you're talking about more about like the the weekly things that you guys would shoot for twenty something? Yeah. Or something less than that. Something so just like have that. Have a class that would just be that. Yeah, yeah, and there would be like like because like um, like I'm mean, I mean, I'm sure you know people make people make livings off of that kind of stuff. Sure. And like a lot of people are getting interested in that, and that's like a whole it's like a it's like a bubble industry on the right. side of the film industry. Um, yeah, I mean, I think there's I think there's opportunities for so many things. Yeah. Um. You know, but again, I think that we, as a department now, have to figure out what's the end goal. Like you, like you were saying, right? With the with the with the advanced class, like what's the end goal when you're a senior? Like yeah. what what are you? What do you want to come out of here with in terms of experience? And is that experience going to be equal to everybody else's, or could it be different because of like a sort of an academic path you took? Yeah, is it better to have some type of track to say, okay, well. I take 110 and then I really know even though I feel like after you take 110 I don't think you can decide right then whether or not you're going to you want to be a cinematographer or cuz I don't think you have No, I kind of knew from that point because that I wanted to focus on editing, yeah. but I feel like not everybody has that experience. Yeah. Yeah. I think you I don't know like, cuz like I I I feel like um me deciding that I wanted to take a step back from the narrative production classes and focus more on both my own personal projects and more of the critical studies as far as film goes, mm -hmm. and then working for the Career Center doing promotional videos for them, that was a really important step for me, mm -hmm. because like because I feel like everybody has to have their own path when it comes to sure. filmmaking, right? Because it's like you know it's very much like like self expression is built into it, right? You know, so it's like but I'm not sure if that applies to other majors. I, I've never been. Anything yeah, else, and so I mean I, I do know, think but. so. I've heard I've heard filmmakers talk a lot about that type of thing, like. Lena Dunham, if I don't even know if you can find it anymore, but she did the keynote speech at South by one year and she was just talking about and and this was where I, I think that part of the idea of 20 somethings came about that she was just like her advice was just just keep making content. Mm -hmm. Don't even worry so much about quality per se, even though I have a problem with that, but just yeah, keep, no, keep like getting stuff out there, um, which I agree with. I do think that, you know, the skills that probably you or whoever got in these narrative classes probably would help you apply those things to your other stuff. One hundred percent. And yeah. I think that if the if the content is probably a higher quality than something else that's out there, that maybe that would get you more notice in a way that somebody shooting something with poor lighting and poor sound, yeah, you know, would. You know, I don't have like professional lighting, like like you know, throwing the YouTube channel into sure. like the example. It's like I don't have professional lighting or anything like that, but yeah, I do yeah. have. Now I have a really solid camera. Yeah, I have a really good microphone. Yeah, and I have really good editing because yeah. I know how to do that because that's what I learned here. Right, and I mean, so like that, that quality is going to get me farther than just like right, right. I mean, you got to remember there was a time that you know, not everybody had access to a camera. Yeah, but totally. Now, and that's that's but, what I'm thinking, right? Where it's like that's uh, I know like I'm like this should be a thing. This sh sh you know this program should be teaching this, but I know it's just not. It's not there yet. Right. I have a feeling that like schools all across the country are going to be teaching like like it's like how to make videos for instagram like yeah, that yeah. kind of thing yeah, like yeah. it's going to be yeah. a thing yeah yeah it's just you know like, yeah i mean i the way we consume media is changing all the time like totally, when i was yeah. in grad school it was like you know we i was still at a time where people were still making film prints to send out to theaters for screening that's an enormous time suck and enormous cost you know now no one's doing that yeah you know um so, you know, it's changing all the time. And I think that we or I have to sort of be aware of how that's all changing. But I think what doesn't change is in a lot of it is sort of like the method or the process to do it. Yeah. Right? And no, I'm not like I'm not trying to like put this on you where it's like, no, no, like, no. You should be doing so. this. No, like, no, no, yeah. no, no. I don't think so. I mean, there is another course that's um, low tech cinema where they're making stuff on With mobile iPhones, devices. Right? Yeah. 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 Um, and so that's pretty cool. That's kind of like where. Um, there was a little bit of like a miscommunication involving 20 somethings because like I remember this one part where I was like set to be on the panel and I was wearing a purple hoodie, which is like, you know, it was a nice hoodie. It wasn't a, it wasn't a ratty piece of trash, but they're like, do you have anything else to wear? And I'm like, no, <laughs> because it's like to me, it's like, where's this? What what are we like? 
where is this piece of media going? It's going on YouTube. Right. This shouldn't – we shouldn't be pretending to be right. – this level of professional, and you know, that, right? That class, where it's like I get it, where it's like you know it is a television production class, right, and right. it's like television yeah. is a little bit more professional than the online space. And but it's like, come on, man, we're playing a meme game. Like yeah. I can- that, that you know, that class really intrigues me a lot because you know I created it. I don't even know how many years ago was it when I did when you did it. Was I had done it the last spring or two springs ago? Uh, I'm not sure. I think you had done it one or two times before. I just had I only done it twice. You've only but done I can't it twice. remember how much time. I don't know if I did twenty. Did you take the client media thing in? The, yes, I did. The semester before that. Was it the semester before? I think it was the year before. So I think you did it two. Okay, so years I ago. think I did twenty so yeah, you something. Did 20 something's in TV. a spring. Then I did client in a spring, and then I did twenty somethings again. Yeah, that's okay. it. Okay, so when we first did twenty somethings, there was no like we literally met for the first day. Talk about having student generated content and no plan. I came to class with a syllabus that was mostly blank, and I said, "So our goal is to create, what are we going to do? Yeah, our yeah. goal is to create some type of content every week, and I have no idea what that is. I can tell you right now that I don't want it to be like we are at URI and we don't have parking." spaces boring I'm like I want it to be more important than that so how are we gonna do this and what is it gonna be and whatever and we spent like two weeks shouting at each other writing things on the board and coming up with this idea until we got that and and then so you with this like student talk show type thing right? yeah. yeah and we watched Which was a solid idea we watched stuff in class they watched stuff on their own they said well I really like how you know at the time David Letterman was still on the air mm-hmm. I think I like how this happens I like this I like that and we came up with this and then when I started with you guys I was like okay um, well let's add this component where you're also making stuff outside of class because I thought it would be good for people that wanted exposure to use that equipment and shoot or whatever not to have that pressure of like oh my god this is the final movie I'm ever making in my life and it has yeah. to be perfect type I, of thing. I, I loved the format that we came up with as well, having like two fixed cameras and one free, yeah, and one. all the stuff and we were just talking, yeah, and all the stuff that was presented like that was, was all very cool. different, you know. It's like you know, and then there was that one group that decided. I think it was like Chris and Casey Dimitri. They're like, we're. I don't know if you were part of it. They're like, we're gonna try and make a short scripted thing. Oh, it's like if we talk, we could talk to God. Right. And I, I wasn't a part of that. And I was no. like, all right, well, you have like how many weeks do you need to do that? All right, we need two or three weeks to do that. Okay, you know, but um, and then when we came back to do it a second time. You know, it, it got – I mean, we had a lot of limitations because that TV studio was literally falling down around us. But, yeah, totally. Um, you know, then we start – everybody started having guest hosts, and people were coming in from outside of the class, and we were having people coming in from the community. We were having bands coming in every night, and it yeah. was like – it's sort of exciting to see it was like, pretty all that cool. stuff getting put it was, together. It was really cool. I mean, like, like you know, like I kind of wish – I was kind of <laughs> – I was low key kind of salty that I like I was on panel twice and then like never allowed to do it again for some reason. But like, yeah, I don't know. I think. But here's the deal. I think, you know, a takeaway from that. And like for me, that class and I think somebody described it as like controlled chaos, that it is crazy because there were so many students and there was so much going on. And it's like. Whereas on a narrative shoot, I can be like, what are you doing? Like, you're not even doing anything. It's like you can't <laughs> keep track of what everyone's doing because yeah. it's like so much stuff is going on. And somebody may be out of the room, but they might be like going to let the the the, 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 the band's yeah, van yeah. in or something like that. Um, and it's like we have to fill the water cups. I mean, it's just in, it's all insane. <laughs> so I'm sort of hoping that if, if the studio is done by the spring, it would be sort of awesome to do that again in a space where now – we're not worrying about like, well, why is there 70,000 cords on the floor that we're tripping over? Or, you know, why can't we, we can't get any sound from the microphones yeah, or, yeah, you know, so cool. and like, something like that. Like and I said, having, I, I am very much ready to move on, but like there's a couple things happening over the next couple of years that I'm like so pumped yeah, about and I'm yeah, so yeah. pissed yeah, yeah, yeah. that I can't yeah, be here. Yeah. Like apparently they're doing a new, like, like they might be getting a new fine arts center. Like, uh, that's, thanks. And that's going to take a while. Took long enough, That's right? You and could then, come like, back here in ten years, and, and maybe it's probably, yeah, it'll be probably, it might be under construction yeah. by then. But like new TV studio, yeah. the thing I'm excited Justin's about Justin's doing TV a class studio. on film performance, yeah. which is awesome. Yeah, like yeah. they're gonna have the inner in ear things. Oh yeah, so cool. the talent will be able to will, will communicate. Yeah, yeah, the producer will be able Remember to talk how, to Remember how like nothing like we would try and communicate with cameras and like nothing would work, and at the very end. The, the microphone in the studio didn't work, so we were, like, banging on the wall to, like, tell them to start because there was no other way to communicate with I them. don't remember that. I think I might have been gone by that point, but, yeah, it was uh, it was pretty crazy. So yeah. All I remember is that I was a baller on that fucking camera. 
is that maybe like I, I choose to believe that it's like because I had the slow zoom game on point and you know the slow pan, yeah. that's why they kept me on that same camera every week. Yeah, yeah. And that's <laughs> that's the other thing that's been really challenging, especially without the two twenty, is that we've had to I've accepted a lot more students in some of these classes than I really should have, and then it becomes yeah, a little problematic becomes... to do what we want to do because there's too many of them, you know. And the fact that the way it works now with some of these um, classes that change all the time, it's like, okay, so let's say I'm offering 20-somethings in this spring. You as a student would have no idea if and when that would ever be offered again. Yeah. So like you're like, please let me into this right now because I really want to do this. And it's like, you know, I want you to be able to have the education you want, but at the same time it becomes really super challenging because I don't remember how many people were in my class, but it was definitely more. It was than a lot. 16. It was like 30. It no, was... it wasn't 30. What? There's no way. We couldn't fit 30 people in there. In the TV studio? Maybe it was like maybe 20? 19 or 20. Yeah, maybe yeah. 20. Yeah, and there's supposed to be 15. So It was a lot though. I remember. It was yeah. pretty it was I pretty mean, crazy. The, the thing that works I remember like... there was like two or three people who didn't like like who ended up kind of doing nothing because like you really could It's like, "Okay, you guys are the studio audience." And yeah. There's three people just sitting yeah. there. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, when you're doing production, it's helpful to have more, like for the advanced class, I think it's helpful to have more people because when they do split up into crews, there's more people that can actually work as crew on projects. Mm -hmm. But then when you do the, the shoots where everybody's supposed to be there at once, then it becomes really problematic because it's like, I have 25 of you and I have like roles for 10. Yeah. You know? So then it's like, all right, well, how do I split that up? This was the first year that we haven't shot two class movies in a really long time. Really? Yeah. The movie that we did shot, I keep forgetting about that movie, Disqualified, is because this is the first year we started having rules and regulations um, sent down to us for mis risk management because there was that movie, Nomads, from last oh, year. Oh, yeah, yeah, that, like, yep. Broke all these rules. And I was yeah, like, so everybody's um, got rules now. Right. So we we there's a form that everybody signs that says, you will not do this, you will not do this, you will not do this. And so I think LJ wrote the script, I think. I think it's hers. And it's really about these film students that are trying to come up with a project, and Chris There's and her a rule who, against are dressed, everything? who are dressed up as like Texas Park Rangers come in again. <laughs> they have accents and they start telling them you can't do this, and it this starts is against like, the regulations. And it sp starts spiraling out of control where they're just <laughs> like no hanky panky, no this, no that. And oh so my god! It's really it's the dialogue is really that's funny. awesome. Yeah, but again, that was a hell of a shoot because we were a gazillion people. And then spring break happened. I think we had to finish it before and finding a location and whatever. So this is the first year that we haven't done two because last year we did the one in the basement multiverse and the one we did with the Phantom that you and I are in, right, last semester? I don't remember the multiverse one. Hemp, hemp milk? I remember hemp milk. I don't remember the – We didn't do multiverse two, the one that Layla wrote about all the people and they had film roles. Not in that class, I don't think. No? What was no, the other class that. shoot we did? I don't think we did more than one. I think we did. I mean, maybe. I don't remember. All right, now I'm going to have to look that up. But anyway, we just did one. In a way, though, we spent more time with the scripts, I think. We spent more time on other things. Yeah. Because the thing is, if the shoot's going to take two days and you're shooting two movies, that's four weeks that you're shooting. Yeah, unless four out of the 13. Unless right, you're yeah. splitting the class up and having somebody else manage the students and you're shooting two movies at the same time, which is a good way to do it in terms of crew. Yeah. But if I don't have a TA that can handle it, it's not really doable. Did you have the same issue that you have like often when it comes to um, the student written scripts where they couldn't find producers because no one wanted to produce? Um, <coughs> Was there a little bit less of that? Yeah, that's still a problem. I'm actually thinking that going into the fall I might say you have to come in as a defined role and we're only taking four or five directors and then everybody else has to pick Ooh. yeah I don't it's know rigid. I don't know how that's gonna go and your scripts can only be this long and like ah. well that that one's that one's fair like come on like if it's how long are they supposed to be like like, um, like 15 minutes is like too long this right? semester I think over Christmas, I was like, "Oh, say scripts are oh, oh say okay, scripts are have to can only be fifteen pages max." And then people came in, they're like, "Well, I didn't read that until after I wrote this, and mine's twenty five pages." Too bad. So I'm like, okay. <laughs> so we 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 were like, okay, well, we might yours might not get made or whatever. And then you know they did them. So <laughs> I don't know. I, you know, it's it's hard because it's, a film that long is going to be really challenging to get to go anywhere. Because yeah, yeah. it's it's really long. And it have to be really, really, really awesome because you can – if there's a movie that's like 30 minutes, 
it's like you know okay well i could program two film two 15 minute films in there or three 10 minute films and is this so good that i don't need to have these other ones you know so that's a challenge too so i just think if we had more classes and more and more ways for you guys all to do this stuff it would be easier to put a lot of those restrictions on but then sometimes you put sometimes you say you look at something that if i put those restrictions on you'd never be able to make it and then you're like but this is really awesome and it's great that they could have done this, but if I had said no, what would they have done? You know? Yeah, I mean, I kind of had this thought in the back of my mind, but I never really realized how difficult it is to just organize these classes because, like, there's so much that goes into it, and like, well, it's the classes yeah, are different like, because, like, with the 16 millimeter class, like, I, I know what I'm doing every week, like, I have it planned, yeah, and, like when we're shooting. But with this class, like, again, a lot of the content is just it's like user generated content, right? So why I always shied away from that, what we were talking about before, where it's like, I don't mess with cameras. I'm scared of them almost. Yeah. yeah. That's why I never ended up taking the 16 millimeter class. Yeah. Which I probably should have in hindsight, but like, fuck, fuck, whatever. And you know, I've learned that too. It's like, there were classes in in grad school that I was like, oh, that's, I don't know. But then looking back now, it's like, oh, I should have done that. Yeah. Because, you know, what, if you're, it's, it's great to get out of your comfort zone sometimes and really sort of be like, okay. How does this work? Yeah, like I respect film, like 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 actual like film film as a medium. Mm -hmm. I just don't, I just don't fuck with it. It's so scary. Yeah, (laughs) like it's it's just it just intimidates the hell out of me because of like the the um like the the rarity of the equipment. You know, like how 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 like like how the like each bolex that they have in there is like a holy grail, Mm -hmm. and like how expensive it is. Like if you waste any film, like it's just it's oh my god, it's too it's intimidating. I don't know. Maybe I'll get there one day, but I don't. Yeah. I don't know if I'm ever going to be working with, it, with it directly. So yeah, yeah, it might have been cool to get that like firsthand experience with it, but like it's too late now. So yeah, I have so many people trying to get into that class too, and I gotta, I gotta sit down at some point, maybe after these classes over, and figure out all right, how many extra people can I let in. So yeah. yeah. All right. Well, we're running a little bit over an hour. So final thoughts? Anything? Final thoughts about any what? life? Yeah. Sure. I mean, I, I, oh I ended God, each so of the much pressure. <laughs> I ended each of the other um, when I interviewed Tony and Justin. Um, I basically asked them, um, you know, with ulterior motives, like if you have any for, for someone in my position who's like you know graduating from the film program, trying to eventually kind of get into like the entertainment business as a whole. Like, do you have any insights, any thoughts, any general kind of advice, like anything like that? Like, what from your experience? What like knowledge do you have to impart? You know what I mean. What have you learned? Like, so what's I mean, I think important takeaway. I mean, I would suggest that you just keep making stuff. Like, yeah. I think that's a big thing. But I'm gonna tell you right now that it's really easy for you to say, "All right, well, you know what? Once school's over, and like, I don't have to do with these other classes, and like, you know, I I may not have a job for a little bit. Like, I'm gonna have all this time. I'm gonna do this stuff." And then, like, life sets in and, like, that gets pushed to the back burner because it's really easy to do that. Yeah. So it's a struggle to, like, keep to that keep, at the front. I mean, yeah. look, I shot a movie, I think, four years ago. It's not even done yet. So um, it, it's it's real. The struggle is real. Yeah. Um, so I think there's that. Um, I think that if you can be around other people that are creative, I think that's a really awesome way to inspire you to do stuff or to expose yourself to stuff. Mm -hmm. I know that once I was done with school here and I really didn't know what I was doing and I was working those other jobs, it's like I would go to art house theaters and like watch other things and be like, oh my God, you know, and go to film festivals. Just to kind of inspire yourself. So like keep yourself inspired. Yeah, because like I think the challenging thing that – the, the issue that I see with students here is that especially in the like the ones that are taking the narrative courses now, it's like so and even right now up until tomorrow at six o'clock, it's like they are working around the clock with these people and they're like just uh, they all have the same goal and they're like inspiring each other and they're creative and whatever. And then like school ends and like they all separate and go different ways. And then that all fizzles out really quickly because they're not because they're not interacting anymore. with each other and bouncing off ideas. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I can see that. So I, I mean, that's the other thing. That's kind of one of my biggest fears is that like I'll get complacent and just stop doing things. I don't think I'm ever gonna stop making YouTube videos. Like specifically, that's like you know my thing that yeah. I like doing yeah, because yeah. like I've almost sort of fallen in love with this like persona and this brand that I've created for myself. Like mm-hmm. I love everything about it. And I want to keep doing it. So yeah. it's like I don't know. I have, I have had those motivational problems in the past. I'm gonna try my absolute best to not 
let that fall through the cracks because it's like I've I've spent enough time not letting that be a priority and I know it can as long as it's not really being lucrative it can't really be priority number one sure for someone who's you know like like I, I literally just had this conversation it's like I'm now like like in like a week and a half I'm gonna be officially fifty thousand dollars in debt so it's like with this with yeah school. with school yeah yeah total. that's just school yeah how much does it cost to go here? Should, I should know this, but for I out of, For out of state, I think it's like 30-something a semester or something like that. It's a, a lot. A semester or I a think year? So. I, I think. No, that's a lot of semester. Yeah, I know it is. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. I'm getting most of this information from my parents. I think it's okay. like 30-something a year. All right, but, we have to look this up. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, like most of the two years, most of the two years, like I know some people loan out their entire tuition, which mm-hmm. is insane. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, total, I think my like my, my expenses that I'm going to have to pay back is like, See, like, like it just didn't just a hair off fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, so. well, so I mean, I when I went here, it was very cheap. I was in state. I li- didn't live on campus for the, my freshman year and my senior year. Um, but uh, when I went to grad school, I'm still paying that back, and I left there in two thousand and one. Yeah, you know, um, and I, we were trying to figure out the other day how much that cost, and like then you put on you add into that the expense of living in Boston for two and a half years and 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 shooting a thesis on it's 16 steep, millimeter it's film. A lot. I think I left there with a hundred thousand dollars in, in debt? debt. Oh my god, that's crazy, dude. And there's there's like this program that Obama set up that if you work in certain places after you graduate, you can have loan forgiveness after so many payments, but I didn't realize that until How long later. Is that be around, well, I have to yeah, right. And I think <laughs> I have to still pay once you sign up for the program, you still have to pay 120 payments. So I'm paying the smallest amount. I pay a hundred and twenty one dollars a month and I've been paying that since two thousand and one. <laughs> But you know what the thing is, is that, I, you know, not to go off on another tangent, but I met people that I never would have met not doing that. We still. Yeah, the experience is valuable. Yeah, totally. yeah, yeah. So, like, I don't, like, I don't regret going to college because I, I don't know if I would have learned the things that I learned, like, just about how to conduct myself as a human. Right. Like, because that, honestly, is the biggest takeaway, looking at who I am now mm-hmm. and how I feel about the world and how I interact with other people. Look at me five years ago. It's like. It doesn't make any sense. I don't know who the fuck I was five years ago. Like, yeah. but but it, it, and add on top of that, I don't know if I would have gotten into making my own content mm-hmm. if I hadn't gone to college. You know, because like I, I, I have a tendency to compare myself to people who, um, like found success with their own content like halfway through college and had the opportunity where they're like, okay, college is eating up too much of my time. I'm gonna drop out and start doing this full time, and it worked out for them. So, like, I kind of, like, I'm like, man, I wish I got into this earlier, man. I wish yeah. it, but it's like, no, coming here is what got me into that sort of thing. So right, it's like, right, right, right. I don't know, man. Like, I can't, I can't change it. You and know, it's you like, just... I, I have confidence in myself long term that I'm going to be able to make it doing whatever it is yeah. I'm doing. And I think try and push yourself, out, you know, to you do things that are not in your comfort zone. I yeah. think that that is going to help. Coming from somebody that never would have done that at your <laughs> age. But, you know, now yeah. looking back, it's like all these things happen for a reason. I, I mean, I just fell into these jobs, yeah. you know, which is crazy. Yeah. And then, like, I've, I've had a little bit of that. Like, I, I was looking for internship advice for, like, a summer internship that mm-hmm. I knew I wasn't going to get. Mm-hmm. And from that, the advisor that I had, Jenna hired me at the career center well that's great so yeah that i kind of fell into that and that job has taught me more than a lot of like a, a lot like a lot of courses that i've had here mm-hmm. which um not yours keith don't worry but um yeah I don't, I don't know like right now the plan is right like there is more of a media presence in pennsylvania around where i'm from mm-hmm. which is like scranton so not pittsburgh or philly mm-hmm. um there's a little bit more of a media presence in that area than i had previously given it credit for so I was like, I got to get out. I don't want to go back. There's nothing for me there. But it turns out there might be something for me there. I mm-hmm. just have to look into it because, you know, my parents are pretty well connected in the area. They've been there for a really long time. So I'm going to look into those, see if I can get some kind of, you know, like some kind of media job. And so like, like, you know, like, like I know, like my dad told me, he's like, hey, I know this guy who has his own advertising firm and they outsource their stuff to a private video production firm. So I'm going to try and make those connections, you know, mm-hmm. talk to people, see if I can get some work. Um... If all else fails, like, I know I have a job waiting for me that's kind of a bullshit job, but one that pays pretty well. Mm-hmm. And it's, you know, it's in, a de- it's, in a, it's in a pretty decent environment. It's, like, literally, like, my mom works at a law office. And, like, they have a bunch of random shit that needs done. Well, and the other thing so is you, you – it's, like, also- if I just can just ride that wave for a year, yeah, stack up enough money, and maybe I can make the move where it's, like, okay, I have a little bit of a cushion, time to make a big move, let me see if I can make this work. 
that's when I would do the Chicago thing that I was talking about. Sure. That's the plan right now. Sure. Yeah. I have a friend who's out in Chicago. Um, she moved out there after film school to do one thing, and she sort of ended up being, I, I think it's, she's an assistant dean or associate dean at the Columbia College of Art now. Okay. That's and pretty cool. there was somebody else that like was talking about going to Chicago, and I connected them, but I don't know who it was or what she wanted to know. <laughs> I think it was Rachel. Now I can't remember. But yeah, I mean, th that's the other thing. Like, use your connections here. Yeah. You know, if you're going to be out in Chicago, touch base with us because by that point, there could be students that are out there. You know, like Ashton's in California and there's some people that are going to be out there over the summer to either do internships or just be there. And, yeah. then they, and she's like, oh, just if you want to get together for coffee, just text me and just put like, I know Keith in your text subject line and I'll make sure I answer <laughs> you. You know, I'm like, oh, that's makes me feel important but yeah i mean that's the other thing just keep keep in touch with all these other people to yeah. sort of see and that's where places like that's why i haven't deleted my facebook mm -hmm. um it's why i make sure to like pretty much anybody i meet here who i form some sort of connection with i make sure to like get them on instagram or something like mm -hmm. that and linkedin has become a pretty you know valuable resource for mm -hmm. me through, through working at the career center mm -hmm. i'm now connected with all of them and apparently alumni like you like you don't need it because you have a job but like alumni get free career advising from here so it's That's like great. there's a, there's a person specifically in the career center for that so. yeah good. good so yeah i'm like i'm not i'm not i'm not too worried about it right like i like it's there's always going to be that thing in the back of your mind where you're like what the fuck am i going to do for the rest of my life you but know it's like and, and there's one other thing that i can like leave you with is that when we go to the open house things and welcome days or whatever a lot of times and they do them differently now but when we used to stand out stand up and um uh mackle or uh the ryan center and people would walk by and say like hey um, so, you know, my son or daughter's interested in like uh, films and movies or whatever. And they're like, but like, so, so they do this and like, so what happens then? Like, how do they get a job? Right. <laughs> Which is a very loaded question yeah. and, it, and it's, and it's challenging to it's like, answer. Oh, God, that doesn't, that doesn't have an answer. <laughs> but my answer is usually this is that, you know, first of all, there, everybody now, all organizations are using some type of media, yeah. right? Like we are, we, we started this project a few years ago with people that aren't even here anymore with the Rhode Island blood center. That's still going on because they're using that media to actually enhance donors, donations, for high school students, right? So, and that's that's yeah, not everybody. A video everybody in the grandfather needs movies done. And the thing is, you know, videos. you have to you have to be motivated and a hard worker. In, I think in any field, yeah, to do this. Um, so I sort of feel like that if you get into it and you know what you're doing and you work hard, that something will happen. Mm -hmm. It's not as cut and dry as like, I'm going to be in an engineering program. I get out of college. What I, what am I? An engineer. I'm going to go in the education program and I'm done with college. What do I, what am I? A teacher, right? I go into the film program. I get out of college. What am I? Right. You can say a, a filmmaker, film? but that's, but that's really generic. Yeah. Right. So how does that work? It's down to you to decide what that means to you. You know? Yeah. You know, it's like if you're a Which, filmmaker and it's like, this is art. I want to make my own art, that right. kind of thing. It's like – Which is exciting. If you're but dedicated also enough to it, you scary. can make it work. Yeah. But – Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well – So good luck, Sal. Thanks, man. <laughs> and thanks for having me on your yeah, podcast. Yeah, totally. Thanks for coming, man. This has been – it's the party podcast. I don't know how to write this. <laughs> so what's this called? Well, I started the channel, right, where it's like media that's like – like content that's not directly tied to my persona where I make the reviews, and I called it Party Up. Okay. Because it's like, you know, it's got the gaming connection and everything like that. Uh, but now I think it's going to be something that – an extension of my regular channel. I don't know, man. Okay. It's like – You'll I, figure it out. Yeah, totally. I want to diversify my stuff. Like, yeah. I want to eventually do that. But thanks for being like, – like, that's what I – um like all the parties, I'm like, hey, man, this – like, like that's what I've been titling the podcast is like, this person joins the party. Okay. All right, cool. So it's like, thanks for joining the party well, there, thanks Keith. for asking me. <laughs> this was fun. All right. We'll see you guys next time. Thanks for listening. Peace out.